Greetings, everyone. Pete Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to another edition of the Monsters Den in the dual co-captain's chair. We got the full house here tonight. We got Chris Allo and Rich Catino for an episode of When Animals Attack. So this was requested by a number of you watching. And uh, as it turns out, uh, both of my buddies here are big fans of these types of films. So uh, we've each picked two two films to talk about. So we each have a double feature and uh, we're gonna start with Mr. Allo down at the bottom. We're gonna go up to Rich, then to myself and we'll keep going around there. So Chris, welcome to the show. What you got for us today? Cool, cool. Thank, thanks, Pete. Uh, hey, hey, Rich, always, always good to see you guys. Uh, yeah, yeah, I love, I forget uh, who, who requested it, but I love animal attack movies. Not quite as much as zombie movies, but I really do love the whole animal thing. Probably because my absolute worst fear to die would be to be eaten by something. That's just like, I think the yeah. worst, worst way to go. It's just terrible. I'd say. But, um, but I love them. Uh, this one is, is one of my, probably my second favorite uh, animal attack movie of, of all time. Uh, I've only bought it four times. Um, I bought it on VHS. Just four? I bought the Chinese. Just four. Just four times. <laughs> I would. Uh, there is no Blu-ray anywhere in the world or, or or up a 4K, so I would certainly buy it. Uh, but the, v, the, the if I had more time, I would have dug up the other ones. But uh, the VHS, then the Chinese DVD, then the British DVD, and, uh, and probably about 10 years ago, I love this movie so much, I did buy uh, a full... 35 millimeter uh, theatrical film print of this movie and it is alligator uh -huh. uh, from love from, it from 1980 love uh it. was re released in 80 and 81 in the states uh man this is just one of my all-time favorites uh stars uh robert forster from vigilante and uh and jackie brown um written by john sales who's a screenwriter and an author he wrote uh, such classics as Piranha, The Howling, and Battle Beyond the Stars, uh, directed by Louis Teague, who directed Cujo, uh, Cat's Eye, and Jewel of the Nile. And uh, it's just a fun, fun, uh, you know, animals attack slash monster movie. Of course, inspired by, you know, the greatest animals attack movie, Jaws, uh, which came out in 1975 and, and changed the world. Uh, this came out a couple of years later. This is the uh, the British DVD, which came out in 2003. It was released in the U.S. Um, in, on, I think it was Anchor Bay that did the DVD in the States uh, in 2007. And everything that's on here is on the, um, uh, the American one, if you can find it. Um, long story short, the... Um, uh, the, the plot of the film, for those who haven't seen it, it starts in um, in like the late 60s or the early 70s. It probably has the year where there's a family in Miami and they're at one of those shows where people wrestle alligators. And the, the little there's a little girl and she gets a, a little alligator uh, to take home, a little tiny one. They go home to Chicago and they're like, the parents are like, we live in, Chica we live in a fucking apartment in Chicago. What are we going to do with a little alligator? So they flush it down the toilet, fast forward 12, 15 years, whatever it is, and you, you find out that the alligator grew up and it's been living in the sewers in Chicago all this time. And the subplot is that people have been doing these chemical uh, pharmaceutical tests on animals and just dumping the carcasses in the Chicago sewers and who's been feeding on it but this alligator which um by the you know you find out this little tiny alligator has grown up to be a a 36 foot monster and without without spoiler alert it doesn't live in the sewers forever it, it breaks through the the roads and it eats people like you would not believe like a like a, like a fat kid at a subway, this thing fucking chows down. And some of, some of it's really scary. Um, some of it's hysterical. Uh, and I, I just love this movie. The one thing I wish... I, I, I do collect a bunch of shit, like movie posters and stuff, from Alligator. Any, anytime I see anything from anywhere around the world, the one thing I wish I would have grabbed is... Um, I'm sure both of you guys remember Jaws uh, had, a, had a board game 
1975 done oh, yeah. by Ideal, which was a, a big plastic shark. Yeah. Uh, and you, you, you had a little, uh, a little hook and you pulled garbage out of the mouth of the shark. It was huge. It sold millions of copies. Well, in 1980, uh, Ideal did a, a very rare game on the, based on the alligator movie. And it, but it's, uh, it's an alligator doing the, the, the same exact stuff as the, uh, the, the Jaws game. I have it. It took me years to find one. I even convinced myself I made it up in my head because I couldn't find it online, but I did find it at a toy show. Uh, but anyway, yeah, this movie is like literally one of the greatest animal attack movies of all time. There is some real footage of alligators in here, and then they mix that, you know, similar to Jaws or, or other, you know, grizzly, you know, similar to other monster attack movies. Uh, they did build a massive rubber alligator, which looks fucking fantastic. It, does. it looks so scary. I mean, if I was making that movie, I would have been terrified. And um, when they were done with the movie, they didn't know what to do with the rubber alligator. So they donated it uh, to the, the, the Florida Gators uh, football team. And they used to take the shell out, you know, just the rubber shell and carry it out. Uh, onto the field, which I've seen a couple pictures of, and it's pretty crazy. So they, didn't, um, they didn't reuse it for Lake Placid all those years later? No. Yeah. God. And there, yeah. there is, this disc does have an Alligator 2, which came out in, uh, I think, like, 91. It went, it was supposed to go in theaters. It went straight to video. It's got an awesome poster, but it's fucking terrible. Uh, they mostly reuse stock footage from the first movie, I think I've seen it once or twice, and uh, and it's terrible. But um, uh, Henry Silva is in this, and uh, it's just it, there's a, it's a good cast. There's a ton of action. It's scary. It's really gory. Uh, I mean, kids are getting eaten, and dogs, and nice people. I mean, this thing just chows down on everybody. But it's a, it's a lot of fun, and uh, it's like I said, it's my I think it's my second favorite. Um, um animals attack movie uh of all of all time and um yeah yeah it's 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 a fun one i don't think i've ever seen it what yeah i don't think i've you ever saw seen alligator it. i don't oh think God, i have no. i will wow. have to we'll have to fix that because th you, this movie you will love it it's so i remember it. i'm surprised you didn't see it pete because i remember i wanted to see it as a kid there was a there was a big article on it in famous monsters magazine um, I, I don't even remember it coming out in theaters around here. Maybe it got a, in New York. Maybe it got a real limited release. It did play in the city, but, you know, being a Westchester, I don't remember that. But I first caught it on, like, the, the, the Channel 7 Sunday movie of the week. You know, the I mean, you know there is a chance I've seen it, yeah. but for whatever reason, I, it just does not ring gotcha. around to me. I, I, I'll, I'll send you. TV. I'll send you the it was trailer. On TV in the 80s. Yeah, yeah, it was on TV. I mean, that's the where I first saw it, and I yeah. loved it. They didn't even cut that much of the yeah. action out. Uh, yeah. But yeah, it's um, it's a hoot. It was a hit. You know, Wikipedia, if it's to be believed, said the budget was 1.7 million, and it made like 6.7 million. So I mean, that's well, you know, I mean, of course, it's we're talking you know, low numbers, but. I mean, it you know tripled its its production. I mean, that's that's a hit. Yeah, that was a lot. Of money. That was a lot of money back then. Yeah, absolutely. And then you yeah. know they made they did make a second one. Uh, but yeah, this thing. I I like I like Lake Placid, and I like you know uh, Killer Crocodile and Eating Alive and all those other ones. Crocodile. Mm -hmm. uh, but this is this is the best um, alligator slash crocodile movie ever made. Uh, 1980s alligator. I've heard that there's um, uh, the the rights holders, which is some family out in the Midwest. I've heard that they're very difficult to deal with, and that's why there's never been a Blu-ray. Um, yeah, I was just going to ask, what's the hold up there? That's, yeah, uh, that's that's what I've, and that that's probably why you know even this. You know, this came out in the UK in 2003. The American DVD didn't come out to 2007. Both the, both of those are kind of you know, late ones. Like I said, I had the Chinese one and it was terrible. It looked worse than the VHS I have. So I, I got rid of that years ago. Huh. But um, but yeah, this version is good. You know, the, I think the uh, American, this is the original movie poster on the British disc. The, um, the American disc has a, um, 
you know, a, a photo uh, of a of a you know the giant giant alligator. But it, it's a hoot. I, I just love it. Yeah, I'm gonna go check it out. I gotta, I yeah. gotta, I gotta watch it. Yeah, yeah, we'll have to, we'll have to, we'll have to show. It. Like I said, be, if you want, Pete, I, I'll show you in the garage. I mean, I, I would watch this any day. It's not, of course, it's not a Blu-ray quality, but um, doesn't matter. You know, yeah, doesn't matter. imagine how cool that's gonna look on Blu-ray with all the scenes underground in the stores. Yeah, if if we ever see it, you know, I mean, yeah. who knows? Never say never. I mean, Dawn yeah. of the Dead is, was held up for years, and we we finally we we got a 4K disc of that. So it, it's possible, um, but I, I hope they do it sooner rather than later because um, you guys know physical media is, um, which we covered the other day, is not is not doing great. So the longer we wait, um, yeah, you know. Although you know you say that, but like a lot of these uh, older horror films that are yes. coming out on Blu-ray or whatever or 4K, I mean you know they do limited runs of them, but like they'll sell a couple yeah. thousand of them like that. True, that's true, and uh, so there's yeah. an audience for this yeah. stuff. I, I, I think is. you're right. I think if anything, that'll be that'll keep going. I think the, the the big mainstream movies we won't see, but you know, just like vinyl never died. Yeah, I don't I don't think Blu-rays and DVDs will 100 percent go, but I, th- I think it'll be more of a more of a niche thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's why I got to order it online now because you can't find any of this stuff in stores. No, yeah, no. that's true. Not. All right, Rich, what do you got? You used to, but I was moving into what I'm going to talk. about about the more modern ones this from scream factory i was able to find this in stores when it came out though stung have you guys ever heard of this from 2015 i thought i did and then i watched the trailer the other night and i was like nope i never saw this but it looks fun so i want to see it for sure it's great it's about killer giant wasps so it starts off with these two people boy and a girl that they're uh, caterers they're hosting a party they go to this house um, one of the stars is actually um, Lance Henriksen from the Alien movies. Wow. He's one of the he's one of the known stars in it. That actually he's probably the biggest star. I don't think anybody would really know, like Clifton Collins or Matt O'Leary was in a couple things. People might know that name, but other than that, I think Lance is probably the biggest name that's in this movie. So if you can see the picture on the box art, that wasp is pretty damn big, right? Yeah. Yeah. So. As they're hosting this party and they're setting up and everything and the guests are all coming, occasionally there's a wasp that flies out of the ground and somebody gets stung. But they don't find out what's going on until they find the one person laying on the ground. And their face is all blistered and bumpy and everything because it got stung by one of the wasps. So as soon as that happens, that's when they all start coming out of the ground, out of the nest, and they start attacking everybody. But when they sting you, they lay their eggs inside of you. And then they emerge from your body. You, they use you as a host. And then when they come out of you, they grow. And then they're like the size of a car. They're huge. But they're, they're really cool. They move great. It's a combination of CGI and animatronics. Nice. I think they look, it looks really good. You really can't tell the difference sometimes between what's a CG shot and a practical effect shot. A lot of blood, a lot of guts. You always see the kills. You always see the wasp. You'll see the wasps like, like uh, the feet come through somebody's eyeballs or burst out of their chest like in Aliens. It's very, very graphic. They don't cut away from that kind of stuff. So it's it's good. It's got a little bit of you know a little bit of that tongue and cheek humor in it, but it's definitely a straight up animals attack kind of horror movie. What year did this come out like, again? Definitely highly. What's that? What year did this come out again? 2015. Oh wow, so it's pretty recent. Oh wow, it's newer than I thought. Yeah. It's a newer one. Yeah, the trailer Wait. trailer made it look fun. Yeah. It's when you used to be able to buy these kind of movies in the stores. Like from right. like 14 to like 2013, 14 to like 2019, I would say. When you could still go to like Target or Walmart. or I was going to say Walmart used to have stuff like that all the yeah. time. Yep, yep. But now if you go to those places, they don't even have this stuff anymore, really. Oh, sure. The shelf has gotten so small. Right. Um, but what else? But this funny that Lance Henriksen's in it it kind of borrows from the last alien movie which was that the fourth or fifth one um oh my god what was the one with the with the resurrection the, the guy that was in the war resurrection when the one guy was stuck in the wall and he's talking to the mother alien like he's all disoriented and everything you, is that what I'm talking is that right. the movie I'm talking about when the one well, guy's like 
there's always a guy stuck in a uh, stuck somewhere with a with a chest burster about to come out. <laughs> yeah, like he's, I think he's part of like the 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 body the bodies or something that are stuck in a wall or something. This one in stung. There's a guy that's stung, but the wasp actually comes out of his shoulder, and it doesn't leave, and it uses him like a host, and he oh, becomes all yeah, and he becomes all like disoriented. And he almost becomes like a um uh like he's he's in the he's in the nest with the mother wasp right as she's as she's uh dispersing all the 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 worms that they're trying to give to people to turn them into the wasp like she's you know uh out of the abdomen right not the not the eggs but the actual worm itself that would morph into the wasp and they try and put it into one of the people's mouths like the larva so they could be the host the larva that's the word yeah so this okay. guy is like, after having this wasp in his shoulder, he's all kind of, instead of him being freaked out and everything, he almost becomes like a, um, the spokesperson for the mother. It just disort, disorts him and uh, disorients him so much that he just loses his mind. So that's a, like a little interesting parallel to one of the Alien movies. Sounds, a, sounds a little bit like uh, Empire of the Ants too. Yes. Yeah. So it borrows from definitely from classic, you know, animals attack movies, but it's, it's good. It's good. The blend between CG and the animatronics, I thought it was great. looks really cool. All right. I'm, I'm sold. Yeah, I highly cool. recommend it. Yep. That's pretty interesting. That and it's there's the most it. random sex scene you'll ever find <laughs> in one of these kind of movies towards the end. I'm not going to tell you what it is, Okay. but the placement of it and why it's happening, you're like, where the, it's like watching one of those bad movies that you saw me that I worked on. Right. <laughs> that's funny. You're like, you're like, where the hell did this come from? That's the scene you're gonna, when you're watching this movie. You're like, that just came out of nowhere. Especially okay. towards the end of the film, right? Usually they throw those in the beginning. Right. Right. This is towards the end. And you're going to be like, okay, why? Why are we doing this now? You know? So, I'm, yeah. I'm sorry. I highly recommend it. Out of the new generation, Stung is one of the good ones. Yeah, I, I would like right. to see it. It's, you know, it's funny you yeah, mentioned you uh, being able to buy, you know, Blu-rays like that at places like Target and Walmart. So I was in yeah. a local Walmart uh, yesterday and, you know, I went to get a couple things that I, I, I very rarely shop there, but I had a couple things I had to pick up there that I usually only buy there. And I was like, oh, let me go to the movie section and see what they got, you mm -hmm. know, empty racks everywhere you yeah. look. Yeah. I mean, it's not yeah. like they took the racks away. They're, they're still there. There's nothing in there, but there's nothing there. Well, it's, it's kind of like, like they, they stopped stocking after Christmas. It's like crazy. Mm -hmm. Well, I was going to say, if you guys remember, you know, the, I used to years back, you know, since we're going, going the way back machine, Mr. Peabody, I used to get a lot of CDs from Best Buy because they had a really good CD mm -hmm. section. If, if you guys remember, that's yeah, kind of yeah. how it was at Best Buy. You know, there was just more and more empty spaces. And then before you know it, mm -hmm they did shrink down the CD section and now they don't sell yeah. CDs at all. Right. And they had a great movie section yeah. for a while too. And I remember they the last did. time they had a great I was in Best movie Buy, section. hardly anything. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. I it's think back, uh, it's back to from, refrigerators. Yeah. <laughs> from like 2010 to like 2019, you're able to find these kind of movies in those stores. But even last year with the pandemic, the, the shelves are sparse. They're yeah. empty. Yeah, for sure. It's a shame. Oh, well, yeah. you can find them online, right? So, yeah. Yep. All right. Uh, 1978 is my first choice here. Uh, directed by Joe Dante, produced by uh, Mr. Roger Corman himself. Talking about Piranha, the original. And written by uh, John Sales, who wrote Alligator. There you go. Right. So uh, this is the uh, the Steel book. Right. Pretty good stuff here. Um, nice. Again, one of those uh, great films where you know mankind's messing with nature right and that usually comes back to haunt us right so here you got these scientists that are like you know dumping shit in the water for the this group of piranhas to ingest and you know they're doing all these experiments and of course they're doing it uh somewhere that's not too far from this like uh like campground right the summer camp and what have you so of course what winds up happening the piranha kind of escape the area where they, you know, the little body of water where they have them contained in and somehow make their way down the river, down to the lake where 
all these kids and campers are, you know, hanging out at. And, uh, you know, of course, then you have, you know, the best part of the film, whereas you have all these kids in their rubber tubes and rafts and swimming. And all of a sudden, you know, people are starting to feel these little nicks on the bottom of their, their feet in the water and their legs. And before you know it, the piranhas are going ape shit and just eating people left and right. And all sorts of madness ensues. And, you know, you've got here, again, it's a Joe Dante film. So there's all sorts of uh, actors and actresses who show up in a lot of the other Joe Dante films like Gremlins and The Howling and whatnot. But it's a lot of fun. It, it's it's fairly bloody. I mean, you know, they get lots of scenes where, and you don't get to see the piranhas a lot, but every now and then they would do these underwater shots. Like, you know, you got some people holding onto a raft and then they would show the piranhas mm -hmm. like, uh, you know, from they would get bring the cameras underwater and they would, uh, if you watch the... Uh, you know, the, the documentaries on, on the Blu-ray, they would take the little miniature piranhas and they would put them on the end of like a broomstick or something like that. And the guys would go under the water and they would like throw them up, push them up towards the people, right. towards the actors and actresses. Right. So, and they, you know, you would see lots of, you know, lots of blood in the water. Sometimes people would get, you know, bitten and ravaged in the water. They come out of the water and then they have like all, you know, obviously charred face, you know, it's all been chewed mm -hmm. and things like that. So, pretty fun film um that in a way kind of combines the animal attack theme with something we've talked a lot about here on the channel which is the teen teens at summer camp theme right the teens in trouble oh, teens in peril at summer camp well here you've got you know yeah. hundreds and hundreds of these little fish uh just attacking them obviously in a place where piranhas should not be right because piranhas should not be in freshwater lakes up in the mountains somewhere but Boom, because uh, society has, uh, you know, messed around with nature, which we always seem to do. These types of things right. happened. Uh, and this spawned a couple sequels, right? And, uh, and a remake a few years yep. back. There which... was a Piranha yeah. 2, uh, originally directed by uh, James Cameron. Yep. Uh, and then, right, then uh, the remake. Piranha and Piranha 2 also. Right. The, yeah. Pir Piranha and Remakes. Piranha 3 Double D, uh, which was the sequel. Uh, which I actually watched maybe like a week ago, and it is hysterically funny. The, both of the is remakes the are... With, I mean, the original is funny, the with, uh, but, you know, it's it's still horrific, uh, and the, yeah. the two um, the two remakes really go for laughs. Oh, they do. They totally do. Yeah. Which is so, the one with, I want to say, Ving Rhames with the machine gun in his leg? Uh, he's in he's in both of them, actually. With the With the machine gun in his leg? Well, uh, I believe that's the second one but he's uh, because, yeah. right, the first one he gets his legs eaten yeah. and then he comes back in the second one with uh, machine oh, with, First is like just steel poles and then I think he switches it out to the machine gun leg. Oh. Um, those movies are are uh, a lot of fun. I, I remember seeing the, the first remake one, in, in, which was also in 3D, in theaters and I just, I could not believe what I was watching that it got an R rating. It's so, so bloody, so bloody and so in, yeah. insane. And uh, yeah. I mean, yeah, I think the first one's a solid remake. I really like the first one. Yeah. I like the first one too. Like I said, second one's a hoot. If you never saw it, you know, it's, mm. it's, um, it's fun. It's so stupid, yeah. but it's fun. Yeah. The second <laughs> one's ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, there's lots of humor in the original too. Yeah. Uh, you know, Absolutely. Obviously, it, 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 if it's if Roger Corman's involved in the in the flick, yeah. yes. there's going to be some kookiness around it, right? And and it's so funny because like you, I mean, even like the advertising back in the day it was a total Jaws ripoff. And oh, there's yeah. an interview with Roger Corman on the Blu-ray, and he basically says, "Because yeah, we were we were influenced by Jaws, but we didn't have the money to do some big fish, so we decided to do a whole bunch of little fish, and we saved a lot of money doing that. But yeah, we basically uh, you know wanted to do something along the lines of Jaws because." That's what was making all the money at the time. So, I right. mean, and Roger Corman, he, he was, uh, he made no bones ever about following a trend and just kind of milking it, just like those other couple of films he did right after this or, or right before, or right after, um, you know, Galaxy of Terror and Forbidden Planet, which were yep. you know, rip off Alien Alien, right? Yeah. Yep. So, and he did a bunch of those made for sci fi, uh, yeah, sci fi channel movies like Crocosaurus oh. versus. You know, uh, Tyrannosaurus, Terracuda, and all those yeah. kind of movies, oh, right? Yeah. They did yeah. like four well, of those too. Like, Sharktopus like, was was a huge Sharktopus. hit. Sharktopus, yeah, Sharktopus, yeah. I I met Roger Corman at a uh, 
at a, a big Comic Con, and Sharktopus Two was just coming out, and they had they had stuffed animals of of Sharktopus that yeah. they were selling at the con. And I, I remember talking to him, going, "Did did you ever think this?" And he's like, "You know, he's very soft spoken." He's like, "No, I, I never thought we'd see this come out." You know, I mean, it's <laughs> it crazy. All direct, all direct yeah. to sci fi channel. All direct, direct to sci fi, yeah. Oh, yeah, and and uh, video. Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, unbelievable. All right, Chris, what's your next uh, selection? All right, so my next one, I sort of cheated a little bit. I was talking to my buddy Sean because he knows I, I love Animal Attacks movies, and he 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 was like, oh, you got to talk about this particular one. And um, I was like, well, yeah, that makes sense because it, it's definitely an a animal nature run amok sort of film. It's not supposed to be a horror movie, though, um, but it's probably the scariest film I've ever seen. I mean, I saw Alien in the theater when I was eight years old, and I th I loved it, but I thought that was pretty scary. I saw The Exorcist uh, when I was 10, and I thought that was pretty scary. Uh, but when I was 45, which was five years ago, I saw the movie Roar, and it was fucking terrifying. Terrifying. Uh, it, is, it is, I mean, I've only seen it three times. I white-knuckled it all three three times it, it's just unbelievable scariest movie ever made um i never I, I don't i heard about it but i never saw it uh long story short um uh, there was that born free movie in the 60s or 70s about lions and this guy noel marshall who was uh married to tippy hendren from the birds um they were big into big cats so they um, had this idea to make a movie about a big cats. And they worked on this movie for 11 years. Wow. Jeez. They filmed this movie for five years. The, the only known people are Tippi Hendren and her daughter, Melanie Griffith. And um, basically, uh, they, it's, it's about uh, this family which is all the, the, the two principals, Tippi Hendren and her husband, they enlisted all their kids and stepkids and half kids and whatever the fuck else. I think, I don't even know if they have characters or if they all play themselves. It doesn't matter. Basically, it's them on a giant farmhouse. They're supposed to be in Tanzania. They're actually in California. Um, but it's them with 132 real live untrained big cats so lions and panthers and and, and cougars and you know, mountain lions all and running free all running free together uh, you know, together which you know it, it, there's a great documentary on here which they even talk about how uh all like these and I, i'm not an expert i don't remember which cats it was but they were like you should never have a mountain lion and, and a black panther you know in the same space at the same time like the world will collide but uh, like who knows all these actors are there running around with these real live big cats that are totally untrained apparently between 70 to 100 people that worked on the film were bit during during the making of the movie the cinematographer uh jan debont who later went on to direct speed and a whole bunch of other movies. Uh, he had his scalp ripped apart. He needed 250 stitches. Melanie Griffith, who was fucking gorgeous at the time they made this movie, she got bit. I think it was in the face. She needed 50 stitches and facial reconstruction surgery. The whole point of the movie that they made this crazy fucking movie was to show that, like, you know, lions are nice and lions are happy and we should do conservation things to save the lions and the big cats. And that message is an absolutely great message because these are our beautiful creatures. The problem is when the problem is these lions and shit are fucking terrifying. So the message is completely lost. I mean, these these giant cats are like jumping on people and attacking them and pawing at them, and uh, I mean, it is terrifying. It's it and was. They, you see all this in the movie. Like, oh yeah, it, dude. Things. There 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 is people getting mauled and everything. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, 
they they the one got one of the guys that got attacked really bad they, they cut away um because again it's supposed to be a children's movie and there's an awesome documentary on here where they talk about all the people that were were attacked but they don't you know you could see them really more wrestling but you know mm-hmm. these are these are you know big cats that should not be fucked with i mean they when yeah. they started to make the movie uh tippy hendren and, and her husband went to you know some you know you know big name big cat uh p- trainers and they were like dude you're crazy you need you need two cat professional cat trainers for each lion or tiger you're going to use they they had nobody and it, it is so scary it's it's unbelievable um i mean the plot is ridiculous it doesn't even matter it, it's literally just people sort of playing around with these enormous cats but when you watch the movie, you're like, holy fuck, how did nobody die in the movie? Yeah. I mean, the tagline on the Blu-ray says, no animals were harmed in the making of this film. 70 Stop. cast and crew members were. <laughs> the most dangerous movie ever made. And like I said, it, it's supposed to be a kid's movie, but it is terrifying. Wow. Um, this came out... Uh, Alamo Draft House put it back in theaters in a limited run and then did the Blu-ray. Um, but man, it's just it, it, it it's worth checking out uh, if you want something different and if you're looking for a like a real sort of animals attack thing. It sounds like this it. is it. I mean, there's a there's a couple bad guys who are like trying to shut the farm down where they live and they you know some of the bad guys get attacked by the lions and I'm like. Oh my God! This is just like blood curdling because it's too real, right? Because it, yeah. it's real. Yeah, they yeah. sick the they probably put a fucking piece of meat in this guy's pants <laughs> and let the lion attack him. <laughs> I mean, to, you know, there's a, like there's a scene where like Tip uh, Melanie Griffith gets licked by the lions and, and uh, they put they put like honey all over the, the her face. But at, at some point, like I said, she, she got bit. I think there's there's stills of her after she got bit. She's crying, and there's all blood coming down the back of her head. I mean, it, it's fucked up. I mean, um, you know, come on, not for nothing, but I don't know why anybody in their right mind oh. would put honey on their body and go right. up to a lion or a tiger. Right. Right. Let a lion lick me. I mean, come right. on. <laughs> Insane. Oh, my God. So I, I don't know I who's... Have to, I have to I see this. The the best part is the movie the, the movie uh, they spent seventeen million dollars to make this movie, and according to Wikipedia, Wikipedia claims it made a million worldwide. This thing never even got released theatrically in America. Uh, Noel Marshall, who directed it, produced it, starred in it, was like, we didn't even make a million dollars. I mean, this thing was a total bust. Tippi Hendren and her husband, Noel Marshall, they had four houses. They had to sell all their houses to cover um, you know, the production of this movie. And it's funny because when, when every time I watch the movie, you know, the message is about the whole lion thing, I'm always like, Jesus, they fucked up. Because if they would have made this a horror movie... This thing would have been a hit because it's the scariest, scariest fucking thing I've ever seen. So what is it? Just like a docu, like a documentary, I guess. No, I mean it's it's there's a plot of like the whole family, uh, and trying not to lose the farm to these bad guys. But you know, it's 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 sort of along the lines of a uh, Boggy Creek. You know, it's a movie, but you know, it's it's like really you know like a docudrama yeah 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 sort, sort of like that i mean it, it's still a movie it's it's more of a movie than 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 uh than documentary but you know the husband and wife are there all their kids are playing their kids and they're running around with these enormous terrifying untrained lions and tigers for 90 minutes which are you know fighting each other and jumping on people and just causing havoc and destruction it's it's mind blowing this film. So it should have been a horror movie with some careful editing. They could have made it a, a completely terrifying horror movie. 
to think that they lost 16 or 17 million dollars on this huh oh yeah they you they got divorced tippy, would, tippy should have known better i mean jesus she, i mean she worked with yeah. hitchcock i mean come on she but then she she poured all her money into like this whole tiger lion preservation thing and so she was she was deep she was deep i mean wikipedia again if it's to believed said that she actually had a fur coat that alfred hitchcock gave her for her great work on the birds she had to sell that to a collector uh because i mean they were they were millions in the hole and um i mean nobody ever i'm sure you guys never heard of this movie because i barely heard of this movie yeah yeah i'm gonna have to check it out yeah it is yeah it's crazy <laughs> all right rich what do you got all right staying with the current crop going to 2014 an animal so the animal that you see on the box art is the animal that's in the movie it's very cool it's not cgi it's a man in a suit but it doesn't really look like it, it looks very realistic it's kind of like a cross between a bear and a werewolf kind of a thing maybe a little bit of a lizard features in it too walks on all fours and on its uh, hind legs as well. So this stars, you guys might know Eve. Have you heard of Eve? She was in the barbershop movies. And the, Kiki the, Palmer. The, the singer with the, them paw yeah. prints on her boobs? Uh, I don't know about that, but yeah, yeah, she's a singer. And then Kiki Palmer, she was also in barbershop. Okay. And then Jeremy Jeremy Sumter, Sumter who was in a Peter Pan in 2003 so you got a couple of known actors in this so uh this is friends that go hiking in the woods and they come across this this animal that starts stalking them they oh, run it talks? A cabin. what's that the animal talks stalks them the animal starts oh, stalks them, them. <laughs> it talks to them oh, no, no, that's different you imagine that would be totally ridiculous no this this creature this animal starts stalking them gotcha. in the woods as they're as they're walking around so they run they go to a cabin when they get to the cabin there's other people actually there that are also hiding from this animal um, nobody knows why it's there nobody knows where it came from there's no explanation it just lives in the forest so when they're all trapped inside the cabin they're all trying to figure out how they're going to survive how they're going to keep this thing out um, but the question is who's the real animal is it the animal that's trying to get in or the people that are inside of the cabin trying to save themselves so there's a couple of those moments in the movie where the people actually turn into the animals themselves. Oh, there's another known actor in this one too. Um, Amari Nal Nalasco, he was on Prison Break, TV show Prison Break. Mm. So he's one of the main leads in it. He's one of the main leads in it too. So yeah, this has a great creature, great creature effects, no CGI from what I can tell. So when it's on camera, it's really there with them, interacting with them. Nice quick shots of the thing moving around. So it has very realistic motion. It doesn't feel like it's a guy just running around in a suit, you know, like a Godzilla movie or something like that. This actually moves and it feels like a real creature that's in that space with them. So the cinematography and the way they shoot it and the camera speed that they shoot it at when the creature is moving, it really works well, I think. There's a lot of kills, a lot of blood. Almost everybody dies. There's a little bit of a twist at the end. You kind of think the one girl is going to be the final girl, but it turns out to be somebody else. And there's more than one. You don't realize this until later in the movie. So you think there's one animal, but there's, you know, more than one. But it's great. I highly recommend it. One of the more modern ones that probably people never heard of. And I would highly recommend getting this one. I got to say, I never saw it, but I always wanted to because I'm sure you guys, I don't know if you guys see it, but that, uh -huh. that artwork... The, yeah. the face of the creature totally reminds me of the creature that Cataclysm used the Canadian band on all their other all their album covers. I think huh, they called the Heart right. Beast or something. That is true. I never thought of that. Yeah, yeah the face with the jo the face with the jaws. Yeah, reminds yeah. me of that. And you know, Rich, as you were explaining that film, I think yeah. I've seen that. Really? I don't think I ever saw it. Yeah, I think I've seen it. So when when they go, don't they find this little cabin that's almost like up on kind of like stilts, like in the woods? It's like right alongside like a like a hill or something like that. And that's yeah, somewhat. It's kind of like pushed back in the woods a little bit. You yeah. know, it's not obvious, and then they you know see it there. Yeah, yeah. I think I've seen that. That's pretty good. I, I think it's great. It's one of the more yeah. modern ones that I've seen that that really is good because like we were talking about those movies that you see at Walmart and Target. There's a lot of crap that used to be out yeah. there. 
a lot of them. And when I found this one, I got lucky. I was like, wow, this is really a good one. This one, and when I got stung, I was like, yeah, these are two good ones. Because, you know, a lot of those are just poorly made, poor budgets, and they really suck. But this, it, you got a good creature out of it, a solid story, good actors, good kills, good lighting, cinematography, the whole thing. Really works. I'm, I'm going to look, look up. Highly, highly recommend recommended for modern uh, when animals attack movies, definitely. Nice. Yeah, if I remember correctly, they don't even really explain like what this animal. It's like this kind of mutated yeah. combination of a couple different, it's like a hybrid of like a like a bear, wolf, lizard yeah. thing. But no, you never get an explanation. There's yeah. nobody there that tells you why. There's no, you know, they don't find anything in a cabin that explains where it came from or anything. It's just a animal that lives in the woods. Yeah, yeah. But it's good. It works. I wish they made a sequel. I don't think they did. Yeah, I don't know. It leaves it open for a sequel. But I don't think one came out. All right. Um, so for the final one here today, I'm going to go back to 1983 based on a Stephen King book directed by uh, Louis Teague. Uh, who who about, directed Alligator? Who directed Alligator? Well, both of mine are tied to Alligator, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, yeah, Cujo. Uh, you know, when you talk about uh, animals attacking, you know, you never like to see something. You never like to see man's best friend do the attacking. But, you know, here, thanks to a rabid bat, uh, Cujo, the big lovable St. Bernard gets bitten by a rabid bat on his nose and uh, eventually goes a little berserk. So if you haven't seen this film, basically it stars um, uh, Dee Wallace, Dee Wallace Stone at the time, I believe, right? Was she Dee Wallace think, yeah, Stone? I think yeah, she was there, yeah. yeah. Um, and she, uh, she and her husband and their young son, uh, they're kind of having problems in the marriage. She's actually having an affair. He's yeah. like this, uh, you know, big time business guy. It's really weird how, you know, he's like a, a very successful businessman. They've got this really nice house overlooking the the, the ocean, right? He drives this expensive, you know, Porsche and she drives this piece of shit car, right? And I'm like, and then the whole basis for the whole movie is how her car is always breaking down and she has to take it to this local mechanic guy who lives out in the sticks in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. And he's actually the guy who owns the dog, Cujo, who gets bitten by the rabid bat, right? So, uh, you know, a lot of a lot of melodrama going on with the family and her and how the, the husband yeah. finds out that she's actually having an affair and who's she having the affair with the, the kind of the mechanic guy that they know who turns out to be in real life, her, her uh, soon to be husband. He also played her husband in the howling as well. Um, and uh, long story short, she, uh, the husband goes away on a business trip after he finds out she's been cheating on him. You know, they don't know what they're going to do with their marriage. So she takes the young kid and uh, they hop in her car, which is basically falling apart and ready to die. And they drive out in the middle of nowhere to go get it fixed without calling first. Right. So when she gets to the, uh, the, the house where the guy lives, there's like nobody there. Why is there nobody there? Well, because the, the wife of the mechanic and their son, went away on vacation because she won the lottery, right? They've got no money, but she wins the lottery. So the husband decides to stay and, you know, get drunk with the neighbor and go do some crazy shenanigans. But the dog by this time is rabid mm -hmm. and it's going berserk, kills the neighbor, kills the owner, the father, the mechanic guy. So when Dee Wallace and her son show up and the car finally dies on their property, who is there hanging out but Cujo, ready and willing to kill them because he's just he's so rabid that uh he that's you know and, and you know they they've used i think uh like seven or eight or nine dogs you know filming this uh this particular movie and you can tell when they're using a different dog because all the dogs look a little bit different uh for whatever reason or they have all the dogs like wet and sweating throughout the whole time you know and he's got the mucus coming out of the nose and all this green snot and all this kind of stuff so they make the dogs look pretty nasty uh you know because obviously they're supposed to be rabid and everything like that but the whole movie is like you know her and the kid trapped in this car with Cujo kind of you know hanging out outside and anytime they try to get out or lower the windows uh he tries to attack them and kill them and whatnot so it's more like kind of like the survival um film 
it's kind of terrifying, obviously, because if you're a dog lover, you hate to see this happen to the dog, but it's a big, huge dog. You got this, you know, this young woman and her little kid, the kid, you know, it's supposed to be hot in the car. So they're sweating when you actually watch the documentary and listen to them talking about the filming. It was actually freezing out where they filmed it and they no made kidding. It look, yeah, they, yeah, it was freezing. So they made it look like they were hot, but they, they, they were absolutely freezing in there. Wow. Yeah, it was, it was really bizarre. I know I had no idea because they told you don't get that that uh, idea at all from watching it. But um but uh how do they how do, how do they do the tricks with the dog and when he's attacking? Because it really looks like the dog is ferocious and he's gonna hurt somebody. Do they say anything about that? The tricks? They they had a trainer there the whole time who worked with all the dogs. Uh, mm -hmm. They did a lot of cuts and point of view shots to make it look like, you know, the dog is attacking a human or a tail or remember when he's smashing against the car. Yeah. But in, act yeah. But in actuality, they had, they also had a, um, an animatronic dog that did a lot of those really quick close-ups where he's actually, you know, hitting people or hitting the, the car right. or what have you. So they, they said that none of the, none of the dogs were hurt during this, of course. And in mm -hmm. most scenes, you know, they're trying to make it look like they're fighting with the dog or whatever. And right. they had to be really careful with the editing because the dog is like having a blast and the dog's tail is wagging and you know, <laughs> that kind of stuff. So they, you know, they did, they worked really yeah. hard to make it look absolutely terrifying. And I think they did a really good job of it. So uh, yeah, absolutely. you can't tell the difference. You yeah. can't, you can't. So uh, it's, it's a good kind of like, you know, not only, only animals attack you know you feel bad for the dog obviously but it's also a, a really good survival uh story you know, i mean i think it was like mm -hmm. two or three days where they're trapped in this car with the uh you know with the dog outside trying to kill him and get in so uh, you know for one of all you know i mean there's been a ton of stephen king book uh at film adaptations and i've, I've always kind of liked this one um because it's, it's it's pretty kind of true to life right because this could actually happen Oh, sure. There's I mean, no real supernatural yeah. anything going on in here. Um, you know, there, there's some subtle changes from the book. Anybody who's read the book, the book is a real downer, like big time. Uh, they tried to change up the ending of the film a little bit to make it a little bit more uplifting. But uh, but yeah, Crazy Rabbit Dogs, uh, that is my last pick for the day. Yeah, if I, I'm, I'm no king expert, but if I remember right, I thought uh, that that was one of the few uh, movie adaptions that, that Stephen King really liked. He did, and he didn't. He did not even mind uh, that they changed the ending. Okay. So, yeah, because yeah, I know I've read lots of interviews with him over the years, and there have been some films that they've made that he does not like at all. Right. I mean, and he always no. has a lot of good things to say about this one. Biggest yeah. of all, the The Shining. He, he hated The Shining. Really most of us will yeah, say yeah. that The Shining is the best one, right? Right. <laughs> Go figure. Funny. Well, you know, they, yeah. the director, you know, Kubrick took a lot of liberties with the story. Right. But I, you know what, that's, that's a, it's a great book, but that's an instance where the film, even though it's different, is pretty spectacular. Oh, yeah. So Absolutely. So there you have it, everybody. Uh, some uh, Animal Attack, Animals Attack, um, recent films, classic films, bad films, you know, all sorts of stuff here. So uh, mm -hmm. if you have any other recommendations of uh, ones that you like, feel free to put them in the comments below and uh, maybe we'll do a part two of this at some point. So uh, let us know if you're interested in that. And I uh, want to thank Rich and Chris once again for uh, lending a helping hand on this one and talking about some uh, really cool horror flicks. We'll be doing this again next week uh, with another topic. So uh, any you guys want to give any links or anything uh, you got going on on your end? They got nothing. <laughs> well, we're, like we're doing the, uh... I got nothing. <laughs> Well, we're doing a top 10 Armored Saint songs this Sunday. That is true. We are doing that. Yeah, Rich and I will be doing that Sunday morning. So that's coming nice. up. Uh, Chris and I are doing uh, ranking the albums of Venom over the next couple yep. of weeks. That's happening. I was, I was oh, working, nice. on, working on it today. Yeah. So awesome. All sorts of stuff happening, guys. And uh, tomorrow morning, stay tuned for uh, Martin Popoff coming on the show where we're going to talk about those bands or artists where, you know what, only need the greatest hit set. So that's what we're doing tomorrow morning. So that's a good one. Yeah, you know, something that different. That is a good one. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, for Rich Catino and Chris Alloway and Pete Pardo, good night, everybody. Go out, check out these horror films, and uh, we'll see you next week for more. Take care, everybody. <laughs>